Hey guys, thanks for watching DataVids. We're going to talk about cancellation tokens in ESP.NET Razor pages and in ESP.NET MVC or .NET 5. Uh, we're also going to cover really quickly AJAX request cancellation from the client side. And I'll just briefly talk about some resources you can use cancellation tokens in managed uh, threads that is not related to web because this video is related to cancellation for web. It's all going to be using Visual Studio. Follow along and here we go. All right, guys, this here is an ASP.NET Razor Pages example, okay? It's an extremely basic example because I put together uh, from the new from a template with Visual Studio, and the only page I added is this slow operation.cshtml, and the only thing in it is this, uh, within a div, it's a call to this get slow data method that I've created, which has nothing in it but a delay and then a return of a string. And there's a breakpoint so you can see why we need the cancellation token or what it can do for us, basically, as far as freeing up resources on the server. So let's go ahead and run this. Then we'll add the cancellation token. So I could swap between the default privacy and home screens very quickly. If I hit slow operation, it's going to hit that delay. So when I hit F5 from this first breakpoint, it's going to run this delay, and then it will put this on the screen. However, when I hit F5 here, Instead of waiting for this, I'm going to go to another tab. In other words, I don't need this request anymore, but you'll see there's going to be a wait of time before it hits the next breakpoint, which means it's still running on the server. The privacy tab, the home tab, boom, we hit the breakpoint. That's interesting, right? Because technically, we don't care about this request anymore because we've moved on. So um, it still came here after that delay, which means it was still processing code on the server that we don't really want our resources to be processing. So I'm gonna hit F5 again to go back to the page. As you can see, we're not on the slow operation page because that wasn't the last page requested. So let's go ahead and fix this by implementing the cancellation tokens. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to that Razor page and just add a parameter that we're gonna send that cancellation token saying that it, this is how the request aborted can be identified on the back end. Now it's just saying that there's no overload for that because we haven't updated our method yet. So let's go over to our method, hit F12 on that, and we're going to add the cancellation token here. On this end, it's just going to be called cancellation token, and let's call it cancellation token. Now, to get this to work, oh, and you've got this new little button here. If you haven't updated your Visual Studio, go ahead and you'll get this apply code changes. At least I think that's where it came from, but you could always just stop and run it again if you don't have that. If it, does, if it gives you an underlined in error, you might need to include system.threading up here. So now the next thing we're going to do, let me make this bigger, is we're going to add a comma after the task.delay and put in our cancellation token. Now you might be thinking, well, I'm not using task.delay. That's a silly example. It's a perfect example because it's a task that takes time. However, Many asynchronous operations, you notice I have await here, this is async, many asynchronous operations uh, that are built in, libraries that come with Microsoft accept cancellation tokens. Now, it may be a method that you're creating yourself, in which case you're going to have to handle it yourself. All you have to do is when you get into that method is look at the uh, cancellation token dot is cancellation requested. You can, that's a Boolean there, you can just check on that. Hey. Has it been requested? If so, stop my operation. You could put that in a, inside of a while loop. You could put it in all sorts of places, right? And you might even want to pass that to database calls because Entity Framework is, is famous for accepting cancellation tokens as well. And so a lot of the ORMs take care of that for you. If you're not using an ORM, maybe you're doing database calls yourself, then you still have to handle that. That's very important. All right, well, let's take a look at how this works. Um, once again, I'm going to leave these two breakpoints here. And let's run it. All right. So once again, these two ones are fast. Let's click on slow operation. We hit our first breakpoint. I'm going to hit F5. Take us back to the page. I'll go to privacy, home, privacy, home. By now, I think we should have hit that second breakpoint. We did not. Let me show you what it did instead. Instead, it threw an exception. Let's go down to our output from debug. And you'll notice that there is a system.threading.task.task canceled exception. That's what it did. So what you could do if you want to do, if you want to handle that, for instance, if you need to 
take some resources out of memory, if you need to stop some operations, if you need to do things like that that don't accept cancellation tokens, what you could do is wrap this in a try. So try. Catch. Task canceled exception, which I copied and pasted that from the output window there. And here we could we could do our special stuff. Um, I could just uh, take care of needed cancellations, manual cancellations right there. And I'm going to put a breakpoint there as well. And let's um, stop it and start it or hit the little fire button. So let's hit slow operation, hit my first breakpoint, hit F5. Hit, hit privacy and immediately the task has been canceled and it recognizes it and we can take care of that there. Pretty easy, right? All right, let's do this in MVC now. All right, I went ahead and created an MVC project. I haven't put the cancellation tokens in it yet. Just a basic MVC project, very similar to the Razor pages that we did earlier. And here, what I've done is I've added one additional view called slow operation. And what I'm using in the MVC example is a view bag to bring the data back, just to keep it simple. In the controllers, in the home controller, I've added the slow operation. And again, just like in the razor pages, it's an async task. Um, and another thing that's similar is with the usings, we had to bring in uh, threading. And down here, I've done the same thing as put a breakpoint to start, delay the same amount of time. The only difference is we're returning a view. So let's go ahead and run it. And just like in the previous example with the razor pages and MVC, I could click around on these tabs and they're basically instantly loaded. Let's go to privacy tab. Let's hit the slow operation. I'm going to hit F5. And while it's doing this delay, we'll click, we'll go to another page. Let's go back to the home page and then we'll wait. Boom. It hit the breakpoint. hit F5. And that just kind of goes into the void. It doesn't actually take us back to the slow operations tab because that's not what was requested. The last thing the user clicked on was the home. So that's where they should go and that's where we were. So this is just wasted cycles over here to continue processing this. So let's add the cancellation token as we did before. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right here. Cancellation token, cancellation token in the parameter. If you do not want to put this here as a parameter, you do have another choice. You could, instead of putting that there, you could do something like this here and just say, my cancellation token is going to come out of the context and we're going to check if the request aborted is there. And then you could do things like if cancellation token dot has it been requested, which actually would be the same as if it came across as a parameter. I just prefer to take it from a parameter because it seems like it's unnecessary additional code. But I wanted to point that out to you that it isn't required. And that's important because a lot of people have optional parameters up there and maybe they can't put this as the last parameter because you are supposed to put the cancellation token as the last parameter. Sometimes you can't do that. The next thing we'll do is similar to the previous ASP.NET Razor Pages example in our MVC example, we will add here the cancellation token. And let's skip to the part where we have the exception being caught. So we'll do try and catch around this. If we go back to our razor pages there, we can get the exception from what we did earlier. Task canceled exception. Put that into our MVC project. We'll put a breakpoint there and we'll just say handle cancellations. And don't forget, just in case you skip forward from the razor pages and didn't watch that section, you might want to go back because I do discuss that you can pass this around into things like entity framework. Um, you know, there are things you're going to have to cancel yourself, obviously, but there's a whole lot of asynchronous tasks out there that you don't have to. So we got our breakpoints set. And uh, now let's go ahead and run. You also notice I did not have to pass the token from 
the view. That was more of an ASP.NET Razor Pages thing. Not necessary here. So if I go to uh, privacy, then slow operation, hit the first breakpoint, we're gonna hit F5. Now the moment I click privacy, we hit that catch. Now it's kind of common sense here with try catch scenarios that you don't want to continue processing the rest of this stuff at, without doing something in here and you log it or whatever. But in this case, since we're, we're literally requesting it to be canceled, why would we continue processing this? So I'm gonna modify this and put a return null here. And let's run that again, because we really don't want to hit this this view or any wasted logic in here that is, doesn't need to be processed. I mean, that could be, it might not be just setting a string. It might be a very expensive operation. So and don't forget in your catch, though, if you want to dispose of any database context, it's really one of the huge things to remember. So I'll hit slow operation, I'll hit F5. Hit privacy, boom, we got our catch. Hit F5, goes inside there, and we're good. It never will hit that final line, which is what we want. So, okay, guys, I wanted to cover a little bit about Ajax request canceling. Now, I can't go totally in depth into it because I don't know what architecture you're using, and everybody's product's going to be a little different. So, I figured the best way to give exposure in this video is to continue with MVC since that's the last project that we built and MVC comes with jQuery by default for the front end JavaScript. So I went ahead and created an async task that returns a JSON result, created a really basic class that just has species and classification. I just said, I'm gonna send back a human, right? And we're gonna make it be a slow method like we did with the other examples and return JSON. Now the way I'm calling it, like I said with jQuery, so if I go over to my home, index page, which is the page that loads from the home controller when the app first starts, I've got a document.ready. So if you're not super familiar with jQuery, you'll still catch on right away. All you have to do in an MVC project is include a section that says section scripts. That way you get access to all of the JavaScript files that are included at the bottom of your layout file. In this case, that's where jQuery is included. So going back to index, jQuery is included because we're inside of our, uh, of our, excuse me, section scripts. So then I've created a JavaScript tag, which allows me to put JavaScript within here. Now I'm declaring a var called promise to keep it in the global scope, XML HTTP request. Instead it's a promise, but it works the same way. They both have the abort method, okay? So what I'm doing is I am making an Ajax request and the way we're doing it is with the jQuery's get method. jQuery has an Ajax method, which in within it you specify get or post, but they also have a post and get method, which are a little bit simpler, so I could use less code. Um, there's also the load, but that wouldn't return our promise or XML, XML HTTP request. So I'm using get, and it's gonna return that promise, the promise we can later abort. And what I'm doing is I'm calling the home controller, the get animal uh, action. And with the data that it sends back, I'm gonna go to the ID of animal container, which down lower in my page is just an empty div with this ID. And I'm inserting into it the result uh, species, which is one property from that class that's being sent back that I'm calling data. Now, the way we're gonna cancel it is by saying anything that has the HTML class of cancel linker on it, when anything like that is clicked, we're gonna say, well, does promise exist? Because it won't exist if we haven't yet called this. So we wanna say, does it exist? And if it does, if it, if it is defined, then we're gonna abort, we're gonna abort that call. And what this is doing is it's aborting it from the browser side. It's not aborting it from the server side. It will still run the server unless you cancel it some other way on the server. But I wanted to cover canceling from the client because that's really how we cancel Ajax requests, okay? So all you gotta do is call abort on the promise if promise exists. Now let me show you where we got this cancel linker from just really quickly. So if I pop over to the layout.cshtml file, 
Um, by default, it comes with that bar across the top of the screen, right? That has all those links to privacy and index. Remember, that's where we put our slow operation in our MVC example. So what I did is on the privacy link, I added the class cancel linker. You can add cancel linker to all of the other items up top which you would probably want to do, or you could just say, instead of looking for that class, you could just do a jQuery selected that looks for any anchor tags or any anchor tags that have the nav link class. I don't want to give you a full lesson on jQuery unless you guys ask me for it. This one is focusing on canceling requests. So let's go ahead and run it and see what that looks like. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to run this application and I'm going to hit F12 to open up the uh, browser information here. I'm going to hit the network tab. And I've got a breakpoint I'm going to turn off here. Hit play. So in the network tab, it's going to show that get animal request. As you can see, it was processed, it returned human, everything was good. Now with no breakpoints, we can run this again and click on the privacy tab, which should cancel that, and it should look a little different. So go to the network tab. You're going to want to click preserve log for this here and i'm going to refresh this and then you'll see get animals here it's not finished completing i'll hit privacy and it just went red and showed canceled for whatever reason if i don't click preserve log it actually totally disappears if i cancel the request but you can show that it's been canceled so guys i know this video is on canceling web requests and .NET web requests using cancellation tokens and of course the AJAX requests from going into .NET. But with all that in mind, um, you still need to think about cancellation of managed threads in general. And that kind of rolls into this in some of the examples you saw where we're passing around a cancellation token, but you might need to create a cancellation token sometimes and you might want to create listeners to tell when it's been canceled, whether the source is web, or whether the source is mobile or anything else. And so I'm gonna put a link in the comments below, and I want you to go to that link and read it because the documentation and the code there is better than anything I could write. It's straight from Microsoft. They did a great job with it. It's just called Cancellation in Managed Threads, okay? Well, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the video, and let me know if you'd like me to create another one on cancellation tokens. I could do it specifically on the managed threads not related to web, if that's something that you'd be interested in watching, shoot me a, a message in the comments and have a great day.